Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with another tutorial. We're going to take a look at getting started with Q-Tractor. Uh, I preceded this tutorial with a short discussion on what you will need to get started in general for Linux uh, audio production. In that previous discussion, I did explain that uh, choosing something that is native is probably a better option if you are determined to do your production in Linux. Uh, it's better to pick something that is native to the operating system rather than something that has been ported or has a um, uh, some sort of a release candidate option uh, for Linux or a new build. Um, and that takes out some of the probably more popular options that are out there such as T7 or Reaper um, and a number of others uh, that are free and uh, somewhat open source or just free uh, that are relatively new to the scene. That leaves us then with uh, the options that are native to Linux, have always been created for Linux and really only exist for Linux. Um, uh, of those, one of them is Ardor. Now, Ardor is cross-platform, but it is native to Linux. Uh, and it is uh, still under some development on the MIDI side. Uh, its MIDI capability is a relatively recent um, uh, change for that program, as it was originally an audio uh, uh, waveform sort of editor uh, and mixer. Uh, now it has MIDI capability. Uh, however, there is another option that we discussed, which was QTractor. QTractor is, again, a native um, application for Linux. Now I want you to think about this a little differently than what what most people might. Um, you would typically ask someone who's into this kind of thing what digital audio workstation they would use and they might say you know what their choice is and then on goes a debate about what is better uh, if their choice is as good as maybe another choice. It's really quite simple this again, as I explained in the last discussion, this begins with a choice to use Linux. Um, if you've chosen to do your production in Linux, then that is going to guide what your options are going to be. Uh, it's not really the other way around. Uh, you don't really choose to use some other kind of uh, option that is either inexpensive or even free or open source uh, if it isn't native to Linux. So you would think of it this way, if I was on an Apple uh, platform, if I was on Mac, uh, my option would be Logic Pro, or it would be GarageBand if I wanted something that was free with the operating system. We are looking at Linux, so our options are the things that are native to it, and those are the best options. Uh, so QTractor is not um, a, a an afterthought to some of these other more well-known industry standard proprietary uh, options. Think of it that way, that we're using QTractor not because uh, it does something better than something else, but because it is better for the environment that we have chosen, which is Linux. And it's just that simple. So, um, you know, rather than kind of have that, that envy of of, of, of being on some other platform on some other you know high grade uh, tool um, the best choice really for us is the thing that is made for the platform that we're on and uh, that's why we're here so um, let's take a look at what we're going to need I highly recommend that you go to uh, the QTractor uh, page and that you download the uh, current stable app image for uh, uh, QTractor uh, you will also need the Jack Audio Connection Kit. Uh, and again, I'm on Ubuntu Studio, and I highly recommend Ubuntu Studio as a, uh, Ubuntu, uh, as a Linux variant uh, for audio creation, merely because um, Ubuntu Studio has been uh, compiled and created with the real-time low-latency kernel in mind, and that is what's running on the back end. So it's been already well formatted to work very quickly and efficiently with the programs that we're going to be using. Likewise, it has all the plugins already in place. It already includes the Jack Audio server uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of the other tools that we're going to be using. So we have right now running a Jack Audio Connection Kit. You do not need to start this up to start QTractor. QTractor will automatically connect to the Jack server. However, because uh, we are going to be using some peripherals down the road, 
uh, that we're going to wire to uh, QTractor, it's a good idea to start uh, QJack control uh, and get that running so that we are able to uh, set up our connections later on as we wire things in a slave master kind of relationship to QTractor. So let's uh, take a look at a project here. Now this is a blank project and I've already kind of formatted my layout here and I just want to talk briefly about some of the uh, aesthetic things that you can do in QTractor. First of all there are a number of different toolbars that can be moved around. Uh, you can see that you can configure that any way to your liking. Uh, you can also turn off certain toolbars. So if you see here I have file, edit, track, view, all these toolbars. I have those turned off uh, simply because you can get to those usually from the uh, main menu up here or by right button clicking and then picking up on options that are in there. So I just to declutter I get rid of some of that stuff. You can also collapse some of these toolbars so that uh, you only are looking at the things that you want to see and you can get to uh, that menu by uh, clicking on the right arrows to give you all the rest of the options in there. Uh, so yeah, declutter. You can declutter. You can also change the um, uh, color of the uh, interface here. It normally is a very bright color. I prefer kind of the dark colors. It's a little easier on the eyes and just a little bit more aesthetically current. Uh, so you can change that as well. If you go into options and under uh, the display, uh, you can use some pre-created uh, uh, themes on here and you can also create your own. It has a really neat feature where you can go into a, uh, a color scheme here and just generate based on one color it will configure kind of a whole set based around that one that one general color that you give it. So uh, that's also nice. You can also enable a number of features like metronome from in here and your uh, audio uh, settings. You can choose your own files that you want to play for your metronome clicks. Uh, so I picked up from uh, some uh, drum kit sounds from my hydrogen drum kits. Uh, hydrogen is a MIDI a sequencer for percussion looping. And uh, I just picked up on a couple of bass hits that I like for that. You could also just download uh, sounds that match, you know, whatever kind of digital audio workstation environment you want to emulate and uh, put those into a folder and use those as well. Uh, so a number of different uh, back-end uh, options in there and it's really quite simple and intuitive. There's not a lot of, you know, complicated uh, hunting that you have to do inside of the uh, options center here. Uh, plugins. So QTractor does play plugins. Um, I will admit that QTractor is not the most stable plugin environment. Um, not quite like uh, maybe LMMS. LMMS is considerably more stable, but it also has a limited type of plugin that it will use. Carla is a fairly stable plugin environment if you're using the binaries. Um, but uh, QTractor does, does play back uh, a number of different plugins LV2, VST, DSSI, and LADSPA. Uh, you will find that uh, some of these work better than others and some of them will crash the program. So um, in the future we are going to be uh, looking at again rewiring uh, through the Jack server to another plugin environment which I think is a much more stable way to use QTractor and it's a, a way that people tend to use a number of other uh, proprietary high-end uh, industry standard digital audio workstations as well so that's nothing out of the out of the norm um, let's talk quickly about getting set up here uh, to add an audio track you can just drag and drop in your audio and start mixing and, and cutting and moving uh, immediately we're going to mostly be focusing on MIDI uh, in our discussions and MIDI is a slightly more complicated um, uh, topic uh, so let me just show you just in this short tutorial how to quickly start up a MIDI channel and get some things connected. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to track and we're going to hit add track uh, and then it gives you the option to select an audio track or a MIDI track. We're going to select MIDI. There's already a bus, a master MIDI bus that is on there if you're going to be going out of the program and into another uh, application that runs off of system MIDI. Uh, we're not going to be doing that in this case. Uh, you can create more buses by clicking on this and adding as many buses as you want. Uh, each bus has 16 channels of MIDI data. Uh, we'll talk more about that on another tutorial. Uh, we can name the track if we want to name this uh, uh, synthesizer. 
Uh, we can actually put on here uh, icons. There's a, a small set of icons, but you can also use you know, PNG files or whatever uh, of a, any kind of icon pack that you download online. So if you want to find a, a, a free or cheap and expensive icon pack or create your own, uh, you can also put icons uh, on your track that will help you organize them. It's not something that I tend to use, but it is a popular thing to do in digital audio workstations. You can se select colors for your track. By default, it will give uh, these kind of pastel tone colors to each new track. We'll have a different uh, color scheme, uh, but if you want to relate a bunch of tracks together, you can uh, create your own uh, sort of color scheme and put together a dark color, a foreground color, a background color, and then that will be applied to the track uh, as it is added. Um, if you're using sort of a, a, a MIDI instrument that has uh, the capability of bank and patch selection, you can uh, usually use this interface to select your your banks and your patches if the uh, plugin will allow it. Typically I work outside of the program through MIDI buses and uh, I don't usually depend on this kind of interface here. I focus mostly on the channel selection. So selecting what channel that I'm going to be using in my MIDI bus and then I uh, preset all of those uh, uh, instrument indications in my instrument environment outside. Uh, but it does have the capability to do that. Uh, we can add an instrument here by selecting on plugins and clicking add and we get some uh, options here. Let's say we want to add an LV2 instrument and I'll just put on a synth and uh, see what we get here. Uh, actually, I, I want to use, uh, I know that I have the Zined sub effects synth which is a very popular and uh, recently updated uh, synthesizer for uh, the current uh, Linux distribution. So I'm just going to select that one. Um, so this is the new face of the Zenad sub effects. It's a, a very different kind of uh, environment than what we've been working with uh, until not too long ago. Uh, we can select an instrument in here. Let's say we pick um, a Rhodes piano. Uh, and we'll go with this one over here. And if we use the MIDI keyboard down here, we can hear it uh, playing back through our system. Uh, so we'll close this out right now and go with that and we'll hit OK and our track will be added. Uh, let's just check and make sure that the sound is coming through here very quickly. If we hit F8, we can get to the patch bay. We see here that we have our master out going to the system uh, and I'm also feeding uh, my master out to my pulse audio jack source so that I can record this tutorial. Um, there is a separate uh, indication here for the metronome which you can set up so that the metronome is not feeding through uh, your mixer uh, and is not going to be applied to any effects that you add to the master channel. So that's a nice feature uh, that you can set in the back end. Um, in the patch bay is you know to connect something is very simple you select uh, the the place you're coming from, the place you're going to, hit connect and then it will connect it together. Uh, on the MIDI side over here, if we want to connect a keyboard, you can see that I have a small uh, Oxygen 8 uh, M Audio keyboard connect uh, connected here. Uh, you just select your keyboard, select your uh, master in, in Q Tractor, hit connect, and I should be able to play as long as my um, channel is selected over here. I can play on my MIDI keyboard. So uh, all my controls will work on that as well. Uh, you can have modulation and pitch bend and also sustain pedal. Uh, we'll play back and record. To record, uh, we can arm our track for recording by hitting the R here and also selecting record up here. If we want to hear the metronome playing back, we can uh, select the metronome and we will get a metronome click. And then if we hit uh, play, we can hear our sound. and so on, okay? Uh, and it will record our MIDI data down here and that will play back. Uh, if I want to turn off my metronome, I can do that. If you want to play without click, uh, you can also change your tempo up here by uh, clicking on the uh, uh, tempo map up here. If you right click, it will give you a tempo map uh, which you can enter at the beginning of each bar uh, a new tempo. Uh, it does not allow you to enter tempo changes in the middle of a bar. What you would want to do is change the bar to a single beat 
uh, and then place your new tempo on that one bar with the new beat. Now this seems kind of odd and strange, but this is actually MIDI standard practice. Uh, the reason for that being is that once a MIDI note is enabled uh, on a beat uh, with a tempo change on it, the MIDI note will play in that tempo change, in that tempo. So if you have a measure with a tempo changing at the beginning and you have a whole note lasting for four, me for four beats, um, that note will play at the tempo that it was assigned when the note was first actuated, which means that if the tempo slows down, the note will run out before it gets to the end of the measure. Uh, so it's just a little kind of strange um, you know, thing that you have to deal with in MIDI standard. Uh, and this is something to keep in mind if you're working from a score, uh, from maybe a Muse score and notation, uh, that you want to make a playback file that will do your MIDI changes appropriately. Uh, but again, that's kind of a deeper discussion for another time. You can set your uh, meter, you can set your tempo in here, you can tap it in if you have a feeling for what the meter should be. You can create markers with different colors. Uh, these are all very standard features on high-end that you would find on any high-end uh, uh, industry standard digital audio workstation that you can do here in QTractor. Um, you can change the uh, size of your tracks. Uh, you can resize just about everything. There's additional controls in there. Uh, if you expand, uh, I tend to only need to use these controls so I don't need to see everything else. Um, that's pretty much it right there in terms of adding an instrument. Now, mixing down. If we hit F9, we can see the mixer. I have my track with my synth on it. Uh, it is set to play back and that will play back through the master. Uh, I can create as many buses as I want for this uh, instrument to play back through and then I can assign that in the patch bay uh, to go to that location and then I can uh, mix that down to the master uh, and then I can bounce out from there. Now uh, MIDI data and MIDI instruments must be recorded then to a separate audio track and bounced out. You cannot um, uh, uh, mix down, I believe, directly from MIDI tracks if you are outside of the uh, Q Tractor uh, environment. That is, if you are rewiring through the Jack server to an external instrument, you'd have to bounce it out. I believe that changes have been made though recently. Uh, such that if you have a, an instrument that is playing a plug-in, such as we have right here with our Zenad Sub Effects, uh, a Rhodes Piano, I believe that it will um, mix down uh, using the uh, track export feature. Uh, you can do that, so you can mix down using that, and it will do it outside of real time. Um, that's, again, not something we're going to be doing because we're going to be looking for the power and flexibility of the uh, MIDI bus system. Um, anyway, you can uh, change your uh, volume here on the faders. You can add uh, effects if you want to by uh, right-clicking and then uh, choosing a plugin. Let's say we add a, a reverb to this, uh, and we'll go with the calf reverb. And hit OK, and this is the reverb, and we will activate it here, and then we can uh, enable this and turn it up. Maybe we'll make this much more wet, turn back the dry sound quite a bit, and bring up the decay so you can really hear it and if I play now on the instrument uh, you can hear that reverb being played so that's one location that we can add uh, effects uh, and the, or we could add it in a uh, audio bus down chain maybe on the master out uh, whatever the case may be um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell that's how we get it all put together that is uh, the very basics of getting started with Q Tractor. Uh, Q Tractor again is a very very powerful uh, digital audio workstation. There's many many features we haven't discussed yet, uh, but this should get you started uh, composing some music uh, and putting together uh, putting together some new projects. So that is uh, the very beginnings of Q Tractor. I wish you the best of luck with this and happy mixing.